Learning mathematics is very, very difficult to many people, second only to learning how to speak English. Do you have difficulty? Don't be embarrassed. It's a lot of people don't know what they're doing when they get up there and do their mathematics. We're going to introduce you today to Fort Bend Tutoring, honey. Personalized math tutoring is the solution. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is going to be about evaluating functions. Evaluating functions. So first of all, you need to know what the symbols mean. You need to know what you're looking at when you see this function notation. Anytime you see f of x, g of x, h of x, all of these are just labels for the variable y. That's right. They're just naming the variable y. So instead of you having multiple equations where y is already solved for, they'll say that the first equation is called f, and the second equation is called g, and the third equation is called h, so that you won't confuse the equations that you're referring to. Also note that the variable inside of the parentheses, or if it's a number inside of the parentheses, is what they're asking you to plug into the equation. That's it. That's what they're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. That's function notation. So therefore, anytime you see a situation like f of x equals to 2x plus 3, this could also mean y equals to 2x plus 3. When asked to find f of 2, they're simply asking you to replace every x with 2. So therefore, in the equation, you would replace the variable x with the number 2 and then simplify. So that's what this video is all about, getting you more comfortable with function notation, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's check out some problems. Okay, in problem number one, we have f of x equals to negative x squared plus 5x minus 3. We are also told that g of x is equivalent to 2x plus 3. So in part A here, where they're asking us to find f of 2, I'm going to replace every x in the f function with the number 2. All right, and then I'm going to simplify it. So let's see what that looks like. I'll have negative 2 squared plus 5 times 2 minus 3. All right, so I've replaced every x in my original f function with the number 2. The next thing I need to do is use the order of operations, all right? I need to simplify this. So therefore, I'm going to be starting with the exponents first. So I have a negative 2 squared means 2 times 2, so that'll be a negative 4 plus 5 times 2 minus 3. All right, so my next step is to multiply. So I'm going to bring down this negative 4 plus 5 times 2, which is 10, and then I have this minus 3 here. Simplifying this further, you have negative 4 plus 10, which is positive 6, and then finally 6 minus 3 gives you a positive 3 as an answer. And this is the result, ladies and gentlemen. That is what f of 2 equals to. In other words, you're finding the y value when x equals to 2 of the function f. That's it. And that's what they want you to do, and that's exactly what we just did. All right, in part B, they want us to find out what f of b is, which means that we're going to replace every x in the original function of f with the variable b. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. So I now have negative b squared plus 5b minus 3. After you substitute, you always look to see if you can simplify or combine any like terms, and in this case, I can't. That's it. They wanted me to find f of b, and that's it. You just replace all the x's with the variable b. Okay, that's the answer. That's all you had to do there. We got a red box around this. And I'm moving on to the next problem, okay? So we're still dealing with the same functions f and g, all right? So it's still f equals to negative x squared plus 5x minus 3. My g function is still equivalent to 2x plus 3. But now they're asking us to plug in a plus 1 wherever we have an x in our g function. So check it out. We'll have 2 times the quantity of a plus 1. Remember that x is being replaced with a plus 1. Then I'm going to follow up with a positive 3 here. Okay? Now you are responsible for simplifying your result, which means that you'll need to use the distributive property. You may need to use the order of operations or both. So that's exactly what I'll be doing. So I see a situation where I have this number 2 on the outside of a set of parentheses. Well, that's the distributive property, my favorite property. So that means I'm going to get my arrows popping. All right? So I'm about to get my arrows popping here to show me exactly what I need to multiply. So bringing down this next step, I have 2 times a, which is 2a. I then have 2 times 1, which is a positive 2. And then I'm going to bring down this positive 3 right here. 
okay next I'll be combining any like terms I may have so this 2a is going to be by itself but I can combine the positive 2 and the positive 3 together so we know that 2 plus 3 is going to always give us 5 and this is going to be the result of part 1c in a red box all right done and done from there we have g of negative 1 okay so in g of negative 1 that means that we will be utilizing that g function again but this time replacing all the x's with negative 1 so as I write this out it's gonna look like the following I'll end up with 2 times negative 1 plus 3 then simplifying this further I know that the multiplication will go before the addition so we'll have 2 times negative 1 which is negative 2 plus that 3 there and then negative 2 plus 3 gives me a positive 1 so here I have my 1 and I'm gonna have a red box around it and done that's g of negative 1 in other words when I plug in negative 1 into the original equation my y value will equal to 1 so as a point I would have negative 1 1 all right so if you had to write this as an ordered pair let's say your point would be negative 1 1 all right let's continue continuing on looking at more problems here all right so here in part e they're asking us to replace all of our x variables with x plus 1 in the f function now problems like this will confuse some students because you already have an X in the original equation well regardless of what they're putting inside of the parentheses do not care okay don't be too concerned about what they're placing within here all you got to do is replace it that's it so if they want you to replace an X with an X then replace an X with an X if they want you to replace an X with a Y then do that as well so don't get too caught up with oh I have X in the original function therefore I don't know what to do no just simply replace that X with exactly what they're telling you to replace it with in this case they want you to replace it with X plus 1 so let's do just that we'll have a negative quantity of X plus 1 squared plus 5 times the quantity of X plus 1 minus 3 all right so notice that everywhere I had X in my original function of F I have replaced each X with the quantity X plus 1 so now it reads the opposite of X plus 1 squared plus 5 times the quantity of X plus 1 minus 3 from here you are going to expand this multiply it simplify it okay in that order so I'm gonna rewrite this by expanding that X plus 1 squared because I know it means a negative X plus 1 times X plus 1 plus 5 times the quantity of X plus 1 minus 3 all right just like that okay so what I'll be doing next is I'll be distributing aka foiling these binomials together I'm just simply gonna bring down that negative first though okay and I'm gonna open up a set of parentheses to write the result so getting my arrows popping here okay I want to be consistent on that I have X times X which is X squared I have X times 1 which gives me X hey what is this what is that guy get away go away and then I have 1 times X which is going to be X as well and then finally I have 1 times 1 which is 1 alright so these are the four terms I end up with after multiplying those two binomials alright and I'm also going to distribute this 5 into this third set of parentheses here by saying that 5 times X is 5x and knowing that 5 times 1 is 5 and then finally bringing down that negative 3 alright so continuing on I'll want you to go ahead and combine these like terms within the parentheses I'll bring down a negative quantity of x squared we know that x plus x is 2x plus 1 then bringing down this positive 5x plus 5 minus 3 like so knowing that anytime you have a negative on the outside of a set of parentheses it means to multiply by negative 1 we'll be distributing that negative next and that means that I'll be changing all the signs of everything inside of the parentheses here so once again I'm gonna go ahead and get my arrows popping okay so I'm gonna be bringing down a negative x squared I have a negative 2x minus 1 plus 5x plus 5 minus 3 like so then I'm going to combine any like terms that I may have and write my result in descending order of the variable so it looks like this I'll be bringing out a negative x squared here I am going to combine my x to the first power terms which is the negative 2x and the positive 5x here that gives me a result of positive 3x and then I'll be combining the negative 1 plus 5 which is positive 4 
and then 4 minus 3 is always 1. So I have a positive 1 here as the last term of my answer. And I'm going to put a red box around it. Yep, just like that. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So that's how to tackle a situation where they're asking you to replace the x with x plus 1 or x plus whatever. Okay, it looks just like that. So there you have it. That was problem 1e. Let's move on to our next example. All right. In example 2, we're given a function f as a graph. All right. So look here. Notice that they give us a pretty much an upside down U shape, or you could say part of a negative parabola. All right. If you want to go with that. And we're given these actual points on here. So it looks like we have a point here at negative 2, 0. Looks like we have a point here at 0, 4. And looks like they've identified a point here at 2, 0 on our graph. All right, so that's what I'm looking at. That's what I see. And that's important to label and know because look at what they're going to ask us in part A. They want to know what f of negative 2 is. Now remember, your function notation, the name of the function, is just a substitute for your variable y. And inside of the parentheses, they're asking for the y value at the x value, which is negative 2 in this case. So at negative 2 on our graph, what is our y value? Well, we know that from our graph, we'll have a point negative 2, 0. So the y value when x is negative 2 is going to be equivalent to 0. And that's the answer. That's it. All right. So what we do along the graph, once again, is you find out where x is equivalent to what's inside the parentheses. And in part A, they were looking for f of negative 2. So along our x-axis at negative 2, our y value of the graph is 0. And that's the result that we need to give as our answer. Okay. Then in part B, 2B, they want to know what f of 0 is. So that means that where x is 0 on the graph, we want to give them the y value. And y is equivalent to 4 when x equals 0, thus the order pair 0, 4. So we'll need to give them the result 4 for our answer here. Just like that. All right. Then, finally, for part C, they want to know what f of 2 is. Well, we do have a point on our graph at 2, 0. So once again, we follow along the x-axis till we get to 2, and then we give them the y value at that point. So at 2, where x equals to 2, our y value equals to 0. And that's going to be the answer for part 2C. All right, just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. That was problem number 2. All right, let's move on. Continuing on, we have problem number three, and in this case, we're given two relations here, okay? So I'm given a set of ordered pairs called f. In other words, this would be my function here because the x values do not repeat. And then I have a function g. Once again, my x values don't repeat, so therefore I know that g is a function as well. So these two relations, f and g, are both functions because the x values do not repeat. That's how I can tell. Now they're asking me the following questions regarding those two functions. In part a, they want me to find f of negative 1. So I go to my f function and I look to see what the y value is when x equals to negative 1. So this point right here is where x equals to negative 1 and my y value is 3. So that's the answer. 3. Just like that. Okay. Got a red box coming. All right, just like that. Then in part B, they're asking us to find g of 0. So we go to our g function. We find out where g equals 0 for our x value. And then we give them the y value for that point. So our y value, where our function g has an x value of 0, is going to be negative 3. So we find 0 for the x value in g and then give them the y value. So in this case, we'll have negative 3. And that's the answer. All right, so we just answer that. Now moving on to part C where they want to find f of 2. Here in our function f, we look for the point that has 2 as an x value and we give them the y value of that. Because remember, our label here, this function notation, means the variable y. So this is just a name. It's a label that represents the variable y and you give them the y value where that x value equals to 2 in this case. So the y value would be 2. And that's the answer to part C. All right. Next, we're looking at G of 2. So we want to find in G where 2 is the X value. All right. So we have this point here. And we want to give them the Y value in return. So that means that my answer to part 
3D is going to be negative 8. All right, because negative 8 is the Y value where X is equivalent to 2 in our function G. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That was problem number three. Let's move on. In problem number four, notice that we're given like two little kidneys here, okay? And these are filled with values. And the first one is always going to be your independent variable, okay? So you'll have x as negative 1, 2, and 3. And then they have a map over to the second kidney where you have your y value, that f of x value. So here, as points, you could say that your first point is negative 1, 7. Your second point would be 2, 10 as an x and y value. And your third point would be 3. 12. All right, so let's look at what they want us to find. In part A, they would like for us to find f of 2. So what we need to do is locate where x is equivalent to 2 and then map it over to the appropriate y value here. So that means that where x is 2, we would end up with a y value of 10. All right, and that's the result. Done. Then let's move on to part B. f of 3, all right, 3 maps over to 12. So our answer here is 12. Finally, in part C, they want us to give them the y value when x is equivalent to negative 1. So going back to our map here, we'll see that at negative 1, it maps over to a y value of 7. So the answer here is 7 in this case. So let's go ahead and write that down. And oh no, I have not forgotten. These are all getting red boxes. So let's go ahead and gift wrap these answers for our teacher, all right? There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that's how it's done, all right? So anytime you're given two kidneys, two ovals like this, and they're asking you to use your function notation to find the result, that's how you do it. All right, well, this concludes our lesson today on evaluating functions and learning more about the function notation. So please go ahead and rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you're able, please donate because that's how we're able to bring you more free math videos from me, Mr. Witt, and Fort Ben Tutoring. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Ben Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? Leave a nice comment. Don't just leave something ignorant on there. If you didn't understand the lesson, ask the professor to explain it for you. Don't just get mad and write something ignorant on there.